yes, so we are live. It is 12 o'clock on Eastern time. I am currently in the new office that I have. I am working in Lancaster city of Pennsylvania. So I am very happy to be here. Uh, I hope you learned something today. And I believe the video will be available on Facebook after the recording has been completed. Some of the things that I want to go over today regarding the, the topic about the top three natural alternatives to your allergies are going to be just that. But before that, I want to discuss some other things. So. These are some facts about the seasons of allergies. When are we going to see the seasons? Some statistics about allergies. Next, we're going to discuss a little bit about symptoms, signs and symptoms of allergies. How do you know it's allergies? Where it could be something else. Uh, some common medications that we are likely to use over the counter. We're going to go over some natural supplements that could replace those uh, pharmaceuticals. But the biggest thing at the end is to go over a few of the root causes of allergies. What are some things that you want to take a look in case your allergies are very stubborn, they have been chronic, and you're not getting rid of them, even with the uh, natural or pharmaceutical drugs. Okay, so first things, some statistics about allergies. One of the things we need to know is that the fall and the spring seasons are actually the highest amount of pollen and allergens in the air. Uh, summer can also be a time, but it depends on where you're living. However, when it comes to the spring, which is the season we are in right now, we have to be extra careful now because the pollen quantities in the air are quite high. So keep that in mind. And there is also a way that you can check on a website when the allergens are actually the highest at the time of the day. And if I'm correct, the timing that you want to take a look is between uh, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. roughly that's the time of actually most allergens outside okay next thing is what happens when pollen goes into your system and then you get allergy symptoms and what we know about allergy symptoms is they have we get coughing we get watery eyes sometimes watery nose itchy eyes or nose sometimes our skin may get red and you may be wondering like it looks like i'm getting a cold hence what we known as before as hay fever which was a term that we got as an allergy a form of environmental allergy from working in farms and the spring time coming and we get a fever because these are very similar symptoms to a cold and a fever and today, actually, even COVID, because many time, many symptoms of COVID are similar to some allergies. Oh, and then nasal congestion. That's another symptom I wanted to uh, mention before. So what is it exactly? How does this happen? So if we're going to walk through it, let's say we go outside, we walk through a park or somewhere close to lots of grass and trees and then all of a sudden you start breathing them so when you breathe either through your nose or your mouth that pollen is going to go to two places one is going to go through your esophagus which is going to lead to your digestive tract and then the second part that it's going to go is your trachea eventually leading to the which is a windpipe what eventually goes to your lungs so those are the two places that pollen is going to go. Now, typically, pollen is considered a foreign substance. Anything that's foreign substance outside of your body is going to be 
rejected by your body. And how does it reject it? Well, that's what where the immune system works, comes and kicks in. So the immune system has two forms. There's the adaptive immune system and the innate immune system. The adaptive innate in the adaptive immune system is the immune system that takes care of diseases that go on for a while. So that's not the first one we're going to focus, but rather we're going to focus on the innate immune system. This is the first line of defense that pro pro uh, gives a form of inflammatory response to tell you something is off, something is foreign in you. So when it goes into your lungs and this innate immune system starts responding in the form of mast cells, which is a form of white blood cells that releases histamine and gives you those symptoms of watery, watery eyes and nose, uh, congestion, and sometimes coughing and sneezing, because after all the cough and sneeze will help remove the excess allergens. Now, in the lungs, when you have that reaction, you're gonna get the congestion, but then in the gut, when you have that reaction, what's gonna happen is the inflammation, it's gonna go down to the stomach, or at least the pollen is gonna go down to the stomach, and the stomach is going to produce mucus. This mucus is going to be part of the, the digestive tract secretion, which is eventually going to go down into your intestines. Once it goes down to your intestines, it's eventually, ideally go down to the large intestine and then evacuate it out. So we'll get to how that affects us later. But before that, um, that's how the immune system responds or the innate immune system responds to an allergen. That's why you get sudden reactions or sometimes even deadly because again, if you say you are some, you have some form of allergy to a peanut and if you take it, the lungs are going to violently re restrict your breathing so that peanut molecule doesn't get further into your system. But that in itself is a very dangerous situation. Allergies are very similar situation, but they're not as severe. Okay, so we've gone over the symptoms. We've gone over some of the statistics of allergies, which just to keep in mind, it's one in six Americans suffer allergies. So one in six people, that's quite a bit. Okay, next, let's go over some medications. What are some medications that people use for allergies? Well, there's three very common ones. So we have the Claritin, which is known as Loratadine, or that's the pharmaceutical name. We also have Allegra, which is known as Fexofenadine. And then we also have our popular Benadryl, which is Diphenhydramine. So they all work by neutralizing the mast cells, the one, you know, the, the innate immune cells that secrete the mucus and the phlegm that allows you to excrete and get all the allergy symptoms, <clears throat> essentially. That using this can help with the allergies for a short term. Um, though with Benadryl is the only one that you have to be careful because Benadryl is the medication that can make you drowsy. And that's why they, if you read the letter or the box, box of the pharmaceutical, it'll say, please don't use this with heavy machinery or driving heavy machinery, which is, which makes a lot of sense. So allergies can be relieved by medication, but there are also side effects. Some side effects can be headaches. Sometimes you can get just drowsy, maybe tired. And you know, those are things that you can deal with them for a little bit, but if it's constant, like if it's going for days or weeks, 
it's going to be a problem. You know, you're not going to be able to rest enough. You're not going to be able to work well. And, you know, you're going to look very red a lot of the times. Okay. Let's get into the natural supplements. So three natural supplements you can use for allergies. The first one, and I want to show you right here, it's this ECC. And essentially, that's, that's the letter I want you to take a look at, vitamin C. Vitamin C is a great anti-inflammatory. Uh, the nice thing about it is that it's very safe. It takes care of a lot of the free radicals, which are oxidizing compounds that damage the cells. The vitamin C can take care of that and they can basically provide an anti-inflammatory response throughout the body. Now for the immune system, like I've mentioned, vitamin C can help reduce the congestion of these mast cells that create mucus in the stomach. Now, the next natural alternative to consider and actually strongly consider is an herb called urtica dioica or stinging nettles. As you can see, it's a nice little, it's the leaf of stinging nettles if you have seen stinging nettles, they grow in the beginning of spring up until summer. And they, what they do, they have lots of needles in them. And when you touch them, they are very painful because it's, it's like very sharp needles that go right into the nerve. And yes, they are painful, but you can treat it. You can use it. And then you can, in this case, we, it's dehydrated. So we can use it as teas. Um, some people actually eat them as salads after they boil them. And boiling does take away the, ne the needles in them. But the nice thing about stinging nettles and some other properties is that it has two major things that also do the medical, uh, the pharmaceutical components. One of them is inhibiting the H1 receptor, the histamine receptors in in the gut, especially specifically the stomach. You know, the, the receptors that tell, okay, go secrete the phlegm, secrete the mucus. The stinging nettles has properties against that. So it does reduce the overall inflammation of mast cells. And then the other thing too, that it does very specific to mast cells is it inhibits a protein called tryptase. And the tryptase is going to, basically it allows the histamine release. The histamine is that chemical that gets your blood going. Well, your blood pressure decreases, but you get a blush and the runny nose, the runny water, watery eyes, all of that it's from the histamine. So once you take the stinging nettles, you want to put it in some tea, just take it every day. And if you are able to take it before the allergy seasons, that's obviously going to be the best way to prevent any form of allergy symptoms coming up throughout the season. The last supplement that I have available, and it's a formula actually, and this one is called Histeis from a very trusted company. Uh, designs for health and what I can say is this type of medication or supplement it's not a medication it's natural supplement it has a nice combination of a bunch of different things so it has vitamin C it has sodium potassium it also has Guducci known as Tinospora cordifolia if I'm not mistaken it's an Indian herb uh, it also has stinging nettles just like I show you here Quercetin, which is another nice anti-inflammatory, similar to vitamin C, and bicarbonate salts with potassium bicarb and sodium bicarbonate. So, and here I put, as you notice, I put it for my Spanish-speaking patient for al allergies, just so they know that this is what it's for. Uh, if you're curious to try this medic 
this supplement, please let me know and I could get you with uh, this gun in it. Okay, now, once we've talked about the natural supplements, these are the top three alternatives that I would like you to try. Now, but be remember, remember that just because you're using this natural alternatives or even just the medications, it doesn't mean that you are going to get 100% relief of the allergies because we need to take, we need to go to the root cause of what is the allergy. Where is it coming from? Those are the things we need to take, we need to be careful. So there are three root causes that you might consider. Actually, I want you to consider and see if that's something that applies to you. Now, the first one is, and probably the biggest one is improper elimination of food or feces. So like I've said, your digestive tract absorbs just about everything, whether you're breathing and eating, mostly eating. But what happens is if you're unable to remove what's being taken from the outside world, it's going to stay in the digestive system and, and will create some form of excess mucus release, which is inflammatory. Once this mucus goes down, you should be able to take it. I mean, the digestive system will take care of it and release it as feces. But if you suffer from constipation or you're, which means not necessarily constipation, but if you're not going to the bathroom at least once a day, that can accumulate in your system. And those allergens and pollen and excess things that your body doesn't want can actually stay in your digestive tract for a while. And that's going to cause prolonged issues. So the gut flora is gonna get, in, it's gonna get affected and then your, the rest of the so gut flora gets in fact affected, then your internal system is gonna get affected, and then your brain is gonna get affected, and that's how you will get all those symptoms of tiredness, fatigue, not feeling well, just blah, just the blah feeling. I know, I'm not gonna put that feeling into words because I think you understand what that means. So that's the one thing that we need to take care of. Also, the liver is doing a lot of work and for, for it to help it, we need to just evacuate every day. So some naturopathic doctors like to provide digestive enzymes with probiotics, which I think it's a great idea to help release the extra feces so you can just have proper elimination so you don't accumulate pollen in your system throughout the days or weeks. So number two is environmental factors. So another thing to consider is how is your environment? Do you live in a place where there's lots of pollen, lots of trees, which, you know, may be a problem at the beginning, but then as winter comes or summer comes, things might chill down. Also, do you live in a place where it's a lot of like a big city, like a lot of smog, a lot of contamination and pollution. Those are things that can also trigger either short-term or chronic problems with allergens. Also inside your house, do you have carpets? Is your home basically carpets? Do you change the sheets in your bed? Do you take care of the dust bunnies, the dust throughout the house? Those are, you know, very, important hygienic practices that can reduce the amount of allergen accumulation in your house. And then the last thing of a root cause could be what we call sensitivity to food. Now there are foods that, you know, we can become allergic to like peanuts, but then there's something called sensitivity. And what food sensitivity is, is a food that you take and it doesn't agree with you. 
just doesn't something doesn't feel right and what happens when it doesn't agree with you is again the stomach will create a reaction ex, ex, create excess mucus and the food itself already has excess mucus which will eventually go down lead to constipation and other minor issues with fatigue and brain fogginess that could actually take long chronic issues down the road so but now but there are common foods that we can take a second look and see if these are the ones that can actually give you some form of like fatigue or fogginess so these are dairy wheat red meat caffeinated products and citrus fruits chocolate is like in between because you can have dark chocolate which isn't as mucus producing compared to milk chocolate because milk has dairy in it it can actually cause problems or it can produce mucus once again these are called the igg food sensitivities and i think they're going to be quite helpful just to run it if you have a doctor who can help you out with that and just have a an insight because after all they will provide some insights into what kind of foods you might consider leaving for a little bit until your allergies get some form of relief uh christian i see your question here so what time of day will people drink nettle tea for the best benefit uh you could do it as many times as you need to up to three times a day is not a problem but definitely the morning is the best time because the morning is when you are actually exposed to the most amount of allergens out there okay so with that i'm gonna sign out again if you want to take a look at the recorded video please go to my facebook page and it'll be there for everyone to enjoy i'm gonna see if i can put it on youtube as well all right then, everybody have a great rest of your afternoon and happy friday